Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you all today? How is the mic today? Is, it, is the speaker a bit softer than usual? It is, right? Could you help, help to adjust it a bit? So, let's see. On my left, anyone who is new with SGC, or has not uh, introduced yourself before. Uh, let me see. Have you introduced before? Introduced before, right? Uh, introduced before. Introduced before. Uh, how about my right? Uh, introduced before. Uh, I think today all, all sleeping at home. Huh? <laughs> okay, I think all accounted for. Uh, have you introduced before? Uh, tell us your name. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Moi uh, I follow my daughter here. Ah, your daughter. Uh, okay, welcome, welcome. Yes, so uh, welcome to SGC, where we do a bit of chanting, a bit of sitting, uh, and then uh, a bit of Dhamma sharing, usually quite a bit. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what is today's topic? Volunteering uh, in life. Uh, pursuits and pleasure, or is it pleasure and pursuits? Mm. So, last week, uh, last week we covered the Diamond Sutra, right? Yeah. Um, so in a way, this week is connected. Uh, on the surface, it seems like it's not connected, but in a way, it's connected. Uh, next week, I think I will cover Diamond Sutra again, because I think uh, for Diamond Sutra, if it's once a month, it's a bit too distant. Uh, by the time next month arrive, you're already Kong Kong already. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, for the Bodhisattva vow, because we cover one or two vows each time, so it's still okay. So, next week we will look at it. We will start off with Ru Si Wo Wen, Yi Si Fo Zai Se Wei Guo, Ji Su Ji Gu Du Yan, Yu Da Zhong Sen 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 and after that, come on. And after that, at some point, Venerable Shubhuti uh, stand up. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah. In a way, today is talking about that. The, in English, uh, so at some point, this venerable asked the question. Uh, I'll go into detail next week. Uh. Today is just a preview. Yeah. If, a, if a wholesome man or wholesome woman, are you all wholesome men and women? Say yes. 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 <laughs> Unwholesome won't be here also. Yeah. So it should be quite wholesome. Not just wholesome. Quite wholesome. Uh, quite doesn't mean just a bit. Uh. Quite actually is more than a bit. Then we say quite. Yeah. Quite wholesome. Um, so what do wholesome men and women do? Yeah, in this case, asking. Fa'anyatolo,samyao,samputi,sing。So,anyatolo,samyao,samputi,anyatolo,anutara,or,anutaro,the perfect equal enlightenment. In other words, Buddhahood. The mind, the attitude to uh, to attain Buddhahood. Mm. 
Uh, today's topic is just on volunteering as uh, the Only on volunteering, why do you suddenly talk about Buddhahood? Yeah. Um, because the truth is, uh, Buddhas are all voluntary. Yeah. Uh, Buddhist sattvas are voluntary so so. Yeah. Uh, but the topic is volunteers in life. Mm. Are you volunteering? Mm. So when we think about volunteers, we think about Siapusa. You think about how uh, they they're busy here, busy there. Uh, they are putting in so much effort. And then you think about how Sifu occasionally will scold them. <laughs> then you think, oh, better don't volunteer. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, to volunteer, what does it mean to volunteer? Volunteer by definition means to do it on your own free will. Yeah. To do it willingly. So, um, when we say that we are volunteers in life, uh, we are asking the question, what are the things you do willingly, on your own accord? In a way, in this way, then we are volunteers in life. Because there are many things we do willingly in our life. But are there things that we don't do willingly in our life? What are the things? Can you all name some? Work. <laughs> uh, work. Uh, so, work is one prime example where we don't do, do willingly. Uh, is it true? Uh, some yes, some no. What else? Besides work, we'll come back and visit on this, okay? Work, what else? What else do you not do willingly? Uh, let me give you one example. For me, sleep. Yeah, for me, sleeping is something that I do unwillingly. Yeah. Very begrudgingly I sleep. Yeah, every night I have to sleep again. Yeah. I feel like I don't have enough time to use. So I always I, I sleep lesser. Yeah. Then the body give me problem. Yeah. Then my eyes shit on me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, later if I I, I tear, don't think that I'm very touched, okay? Yeah, it's because my eyes are so dry, it starts tearing by itself. <laughs> yeah. But most people uh, don't need to be forced to sleep. Yeah. Except kids. Uh, kids don't want to go to sleep and don't want to wake up. Yeah. Uh, adults want to sleep but don't want to wake up also. Uh, but when there's work, have to wake up. Mm. What else? What else? What are the other things we do unwillingly? Huh? Not willing to get scolded. Not willing to get scolded. Uh, so, although we don't want to be scolded, but you get scolded. Mm. Uh, did the person scold you willingly? Maybe willingly, yeah. <laughs> maybe unwillingly scold you. Mm. So what are the things that we do willingly? What are the things we do willingly? Eating? Uh, for, uh, playing games. Uh, playing ga Very good. Playing games, if we do play, it's always willingly. Yeah? Is there anyone who ever like... Ah, win already, lah, yeah. <laughs> huh? I don't think anyone ever play games that way. Yeah. Uh, anyone? You play willingly? Do you play games willingly? Yes. <coughs> yeah, normal. Mm. How about eating? Do you eat willingly? Uh, that is a bit tricky. Mm. Uh, sometimes we don't feel like eating. Oh, uh, sometimes maybe we don't feel like eating. Yes. Oh. You know why? Because your life too good lah. <laughs> your mummy 
Too nice to you, lah. <laughs> yeah. Every time, it, huh? If you are full, you don't really need. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Because your mummy is, uh, love you so much. Make sure that before your eyes open, she maybe she start feeding you. So by the time you wake, you wake up, open your eyes, you are full. <laughs> Whole day, you have food. Yeah, that's why you are never hungry. Have you been hungry before? <laughs> before. Yes. before. Uh, how many times in your life? Uh, cannot remember. Many, many times. Uh, what? Three times. <laughs> Three times is not many times. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So besides food, what else? What other? Watching video. Watching video. <laughs> ah. So we play games, uh, we, we do it willingly. Watching video, we watch willingly. Yeah? Uh, so there, in life, there are things that we do willingly and there are things we don't do willingly. We do begrudgingly. Uh, among the two groups, what, is the, what are the distinction? What are the distinction? The things that we do willingly, does it give us pleasure or does it give us pain? Pleasure. pleasure, yes. The things that we do it, do it unwillingly, does it give us pleasure or does it give us pain? pain. Mm. Uh, maybe sometimes it doesn't give us pain, but at least it doesn't give us much pleasure. Yeah. If anything doesn't give us pleasure, we may even find it boring. Yeah. We find it so boring. Yeah? Uh, although it doesn't give us pain, but we are not willing to do. We are not interested to do. Yeah? We find it boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't, don't look at them. La. <laughs> you are also. La. <laughs> we are all like that. La. We are mostly like that. Yeah. So, because of this two set of different con set of conditions are uh, not two conditions are uh, two sets of conditions, so uh, it influences our decision. In this way, we are not free. In this way, we are not free. We are not free because of the things that give us pleasure and because of the things that give us pain. But it's not the things that's a problem. It's because of how we got used to react, reacting and responding to these two categories. But wait, why, why do we say that we are not free? We are not free in what way? We are not free because when we encounter things that we like, um, we say that we voluntarily want to do it. Do we have a choice not to do it? In reality, we should have a choice. But in actual situation, we find ourselves involuntarily wanting to do it. So. The word volunteer is not simply about wanting to do something, but it's also about intent. To have free will, to be able to make the decision, that you make the decision. In that sense, when we encounter things that are pleasant, things that we like, yeah, activities that excites us, that we don't find boring, Ah, in those cases, we actually exhibit very little free will. In that sense, we are not free. Anytime we find ourselves involuntarily acting, doing things, pursuing, then actually we are not volunteering. Yeah. In a way, it seems like, no, I, volunt I, I, I myself decide to want to do it. But if, if every time you encounter, you can only choose one thing, then you have no choice. 
then you're not really free. Understand? Can make sense or not? Huh? If every time you see cake, you must eat. Mopin, have to keep it, have to eat. The moment you see it, cake, have to eat. Uh, then you're not you're not free anymore. <laughs> yeah. Similarly, when we encounter unpleasantness, when we find things that are not interesting, can we help but feel bored? Can we help but feel that it is boring? Can we help it? If we cannot help but feel bored, we cannot help but look at it and say, eee, this is so boring. Then it means that as far as that is concerned, we are not free as well. It means that we are not free as well. It means that as far as this category of things that we don't like, things that don't seem to interest us, uh, we are bounded by it also. But likewise, it seems paradoxical. It seems like, no, Shifu, I choose not to play because it's so boring. But we often think that we are making the choice. But if every time you encounter it, you can only make that choice, is that still a choice? Is that still a choice? Not really a choice, really. The clouds don't have a choice. When there are conditions, when the cold air meets the hot, warm air, yeah, causing the vapor to condense and precipitate, it has no choice but to rain. Yeah. We call that process scientifically precipitation. Yeah. It has no choice. When you leave a, a cup of water or maybe a, a dish of water you know, in the open, the water has no choice. It's a matter of time, not a matter of if, but when. When the water will evaporate. It has no choice. No choice in it. When you put 3-in-1 coffee powder in the water, and you put hot water in and stir, can the powder say, I don't want to make coffee. And then no matter how you stir, water is water, coffee is coffee. Can the water have a choice? No choice. What if the water have a choice? And that day the water, every time with coffee, boring, I do one. Then uh, after that you drink, eh, hey, I'm not playing water. Then you see the coffee below and the water on top. And no matter how you stir, 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 then the moment you want to drink, <laughs> the coffee run away, coffee powder run away. Huh? If that happens, then jalat, huh? The coffee powder has no choice. The hot water has no choice. Because it has no choice, it cannot do evil, it cannot do good as well. It cannot plant karmic seeds. It cannot sow yet. If you put cold water and coffee, you get longgang zui. <laughs> Where some will melt, some doesn't melt. It doesn't have a choice, it's not his fault. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you we make coffee or make make three in one tea. You think that the water has boiled. It never happened to me before. Because the kettle in my place, you know, is electric. Uh, before I continue, uh, I'm just stating a fact, okay? Don't, don't think I'm complaining again. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I, do, I do sometimes rant a bit, uh, yeah, but I'm catching myself. So, but sometimes I'm quite grateful. That's why I don't tell people. I just tell in class. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm great, grateful because when such things happen, 
it's an opportunity for me to cultivate. So I'll tell you something funny. Because my students, when they come to my place for the book study group, then they also offer to clean up the place. Then they'll clean, clean toilet, clean the kitchen, clean the floor. Uh, actually, to me, I don't need it to be clean, so clean. Uh. A bit of dirt is good. <laughs> good for immune system. But they are very helpful. They clean, 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 clean. Then, besides clean, they will switch off the power. <laughs> you know those power plug with the light? If there's a light and you switch it off, yes, you do save some electricity. But the, the old ones don't have a light. So whether you switch on or off, especially for electric cattle, it actually doesn't save anything. Yeah. For electronic products, yes. Even though everything is off, power is going in because the as long as the button is not physical, if the button is soft touch, it means that there's some some electronics that's powering it. Yeah, for it to be soft touch. But anyway, I digress, as usual. So anyway, the electric kettle one day, well actually a few times, was not turned on. So I just happily fill it with water, put it, and then press the kettle switch, and then. <laughs> I didn't check the, you know, and from there, I realized that, yeah, you know, I don't know whether you all, you all realize what, I, what I'm talking about or what I realized, that in life, many times we make assumptions, and you know what happened? I just press it, and I, I go about doing my things, and after, around that period of time, I just come back, and I could almost feel the kettle being hot, you know. <laughs> and I put the thing, then I pour it in. And I was, I was genuinely surprised. Hey, what happened to the water? Why is it, like, not missing? <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, it's a very interesting, surreal experience, you know. That I genuinely felt as though the kettle was warm, you know. Yeah, our mind is so... Crazy, <laughs> so amazing, you know. Nothing happened all the while because there was just no power. The, 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 the main plug there was off. But I, I felt as though the kettle was, was, has boiled. So I was actually careful and I pour. Yeah. And that's why there was a surprise. If I had known that it didn't boil, I wouldn't have poured at the first place. Yeah. So because of that, ah, I. I, I observe this thing about myself that, oh, and I thought that I'm quite free of assumptions already. Hmm, interesting. What other assumptions do we have? Yeah, but that's, we will re, we, we'll revisit that in a while. Huh? Yeah, so, when we pour <laughs> the unboiled water, <laughs> it's basically tap water, <laughs> and put inside, what happened? Do you get coffee? Uh, you get long kang <laughs> Yeah. It has no choice. It has no choice. It has no choice just like our phone. It is neither voluntary or involuntary. Yeah. We could say that it's involuntary in a way. If you pick it up, you press the button, it must power up. It cannot choose. So in a way, it's involuntary. But in a way, it is not involuntary as well. Because it cannot choose to begin with. When we say someone is involuntary, it means that that, that thing or person must be able to choose to begin. But at this moment, cannot choose. This can never choose anyway. So it is neither voluntary nor involuntary. So... We have to ask ourselves, how do we live our life? Do we live our life voluntarily or involuntarily? Or neither voluntarily nor involuntarily? Do we live like on, on a reaction level, as a reflex? When someone say this, I must say this back. When someone do that, I must do this back. Do we have a choice? 
If we don't have a choice, that means we, we have moved ourselves from voluntary sentient beings capable of wonderful, amazing accomplishments, capable of even the epitome of human awareness. Anuttaro Sama Sambodhi. Yeah. Unsurpassed perfect enlightenment, Buddhahood. But we, if we, instead of that, we don't, we don't use our sentientness to make sentient decision. But we, we allow ourselves, we unwittingly, unwittingly actually means involuntarily, yeah? allow ourselves to start acting in ways that we think is voluntary. Yeah? To think that, yeah, I have a right to be angry. Uh, but in fact, if every time you act in this same way, we are basically involuntarily acting. And if we do it too often, then we become a handphone. <laughs> handphones are good in that sense. Because handphones, they cannot decide. So, when you send a nice message to someone, the handphone cannot decide that because the handphone is not happy with you, when you send happy messages, it go and change it. Yeah? Imagine if the app does that. Uh, Oh, this will be chaos. Uh. Yeah, but actually, our handphones sometimes do that. You write, 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 then, then the autocomplete. <laughs> yeah? Autocomplete, that's why sometimes creates some problem. <laughs> because it has a bit of supposed to be intelligence. Yeah? And sometimes it even decides for you, no, no, this is the word you want. <laughs> and you just enter, what? <laughs> Luckily, when you make a phone call, yeah, the condenser mic here, actually there's usually two. There are one to pick up the environment, one for your voice. And sometimes there is even good, the high-end phones even have one on top. Yeah. It pick it up, digitize it into a signal, then compress it, and then pass through 3G signal. Even our voice is now all digital. Yeah. And then somewhere on, you know, like even if I call you now, it doesn't go directly to you, you know. It goes to the cell tower, cell tower to the, you know, the telco. If it's the same telco, it still have to go through that route, you know. It cannot just go directly. Long time ago, Motorola has this press to talk feature, which I think most Singaporeans never ever try. <laughs> yeah. That you can actually literally just call directly. Yeah. Talk to each other as though it's like a, what do you call that, like a walkie talkie. Now imagine if, when I call you and I say, hey, hello, where are you now? And then appear on your side, where are you now? <laughs> huh? The world will be in chaos. The world will be in chaos. But sometimes we act like this, you know. In our mind, we want to be nice to others. But when it comes out, it's not so nice. Oh. Huh? When it comes out, it's not so nice. So our mouth, our mind, and if you will, our heart, sometimes they don't, they don't communicate with one another. Sometimes it's almost we involuntarily say something stupid or something nasty. If this happens too often, then it becomes a habit. Then this habit becomes, in a way, who we are. In, in English, we call it his character. Or in Hokkien, we say, <laughs> yeah. In Chinese, we say, 就是他个性, If we like someone, then we say, 性格. If we don't like someone, we say, 他的臭样子. <laughs> <laughs> the word character has another meaning not just about what you are doing but the way we do in that instance is just called behavior over time then we say this is his style and if it's something 
more than just the actions yeah, that denotes the way the mind, the person's uh, mindset is, then we say it's the person's character. And whether it's Singa or character, uh, I don't know about other culture, uh, like let's say the, the American Indian culture, the uh, Cherokee culture, the Apache culture, I, I don't know too, enough. Uh. But in one, I don't know, maybe it's the Chinook culture or Apache, they have this very interesting story. They say that in all of us, there are two wolves. Yeah, do you know about the two wolves? Yeah. And they say, they have this, this, this story, they tell their children, that in all of us, there are two wolves. In Singapore, where to find wolf? Ah? <laughs> Only, our zoo don't even, I, I don't recall seeing wolf in our zoo, you know. Huh? Singapore, we don't even have wolf in our zoo. Better don't, better don't have. Like, leave them in the wild. But anyway, they say, these two wolves, one is good, one is bad. And depending on who you feed, then that wolf becomes bigger and stronger. Now you must know that because in the... Uh, Again, I can't remember which of these, uh, uh, whether it's Apache, Chinook, or Cherokee, uh, uh, Cherokee culture, yeah. But in one of them, but for all of them, wolves is a common sight, because in Native America, you know, th they are they are part of nature, so they don't look at wolf as like fearsome creature to be feared, yeah. But they use it. So, so as a result, they use it to symbolize something with strength. But who do you feed? Then that becomes stronger. And they use it to educate their, their child and say, if you feed the good wolf, then the good wolf will become stronger. And the bad wolf will not be so big and the goodness can grow. I think it's a very beautiful expression. When I first heard about it, and it was only recently I heard about it, I said, like, oh, interesting. Yeah. I use a slightly different one. I, I tell people, our heart is like a pot. And you, you know, in Buddhist approach, huh? we plant different seeds. Do you want to plant and have nice flower? Or do you want to plant and have weeds? Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you keep throwing rubbish in your, in your pot, then the flower, eh. Yeah, if you put nice, good things, then, ah, nice flowers. So, um, the way we are is not fixed. Although in the culture, English culture, it says, a leopard cannot change its spot. Uh, this is to describe how people's character doesn't change. Maybe, maybe in the Western civilization, they have observed this over time. Yeah? We cannot deny what they observe as well. Maybe they really observe a lot of people who don't change. Chinese have a slightly different saying. Jiang san yi gai. So you see, it's nan yi, not bu nan yi. <laughs> ah. Uh, so Chinese, uh, and you notice that it's not just this, this counterpart idiom. There are a lot of idioms from the West and from the East. Uh, the West uh, tend to look at things in very clear, hard lines, black and white. Chinese tend to be, <laughs> yeah. In Buddhism, we say that is there character to begin with? We say that what we call character, by definition, don't exist. But there is continuity. There's continuum. Continuum of what? Of this habitual tendency. That because of past actions being repeated, it starts to take momentum. Then Liu, then Liu Xing. Yeah. Ping then Xiang Xi. Yeah. Then Liu. 
So this continuum starts to snowball in a way and gain momentum. And when it has gained momentum, it becomes harder to change. In some ways, like Newton's law, huh? an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. Every force has an equal and opposite erection or something. There are the three laws of motion. So, um, our in Buddhism we say that what we call character uh, is more what we observe over a period of time. But that itself is, not, is still not inherent. Not inherent in what sense? Not inherent in the sense that whatever we observe as character, conventionally we can call it character also. Yeah? That's the beauty about Buddhism, you know. Once you know what it means, you can use it, use the name. But you must be careful. Other people may misconstrue you thinking that you are pointing, you are talking about the, the unchanging thing. In Buddhism, we say whatever character we can observe is actually changing also. And to begin with, how did this character come about? This so-called character comes about because of collective sets of conditions. Conditions that are further perpetrated by the individual. So we are involved in that decision. But if we decide once, decide twice, decide three times, and over time, allow our past decisions to influence, influence us stronger than our current decision, then it becomes a tendency. It becomes a habit. Then we become involuntary. Then we Sui Ye Liu Zhuan. Sui Ye Liu usually means that when a person has come to the end of their life, then we transpire, we, uh, we get reborn according to our karma. Sui yeah? Ye, then Liu Zhuan. Liu, yeah? life after life, Zhuan. We change from human life to animal, animal to heavenly, heavenly to this and that. We'll keep going round and round. But in actual fact, this Sui Ye Liu Zhuan, to, to transpire or to flow according to our karma, doesn't just happen when we pass away. On a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, if we live our life involuntarily, then we are always sui ye liu zhuan. That is why at the end of our life, we sui ye liu zhuan. If our whole life, we are in control of our life, we don't go according to the impulses that arise, then how is it possible that at the end of our life, suddenly we go according to past impulses. That is impossible. Conversely, if our whole life, we have been just going with the flow. And by flow, what we mean is how we feel. The impulse that arise at that moment, at this moment, at later moment. At whatever moment you have an impulse, you just act according to, to this. Then, why are we surprised? Why should anyone be surprised that at the end of our life, we would just go with whatever impulse arises? Of course we would go that way also. Buddhists, in Buddhism, the practice of the Noble Eightfold Path is all about transcending this tendency, about not living an involuntary life but living a truly voluntary life. Voluntary, not in terms of pursuing our pursuing pleasure, 
voluntary, not in terms of deciding that, oh, I don't like this, so I voluntarily don't do it. Yeah. But voluntary in a sense that we are truly able to make the decision. Yeah. Knowing clearly that we can choose to do it or not do it. But then, what is the basis for us to choose A over B? Our choice is usually defined or limited by how we feel. In a, in a sense, we can say that that is making a choice. But that kind of choice means that our decisions are often shaped by our past experience. Shaped by our preferences over for pleasure over boring. Ah. I've been traumatizing small kids with this. <laughs> Not just them. Yeah, they are very cute. Um, but this is a very interesting concept. Not just for small kids. But I tell small kids in particular. Why? Because just as our teachers for the longest time, our principals for the longest time, have always been telling us, you are the future. And now I, I, I start to feel that way. Not so much that they are our future to do this, to that, but they have so much potential waiting to be explored. I tell them, if you can overcome your likes and dislike, if you can overcome your preferences for this or that, you will never be bored again. You will never be bored. Can you, can you all just sit back and just consider this crazy idea? You know, people want to go and cure cancer and hunger. I want to cure boring. I have very low expectation of myself. <laughs> I'm an underachiever sifu. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, not that I don't want to. I mean, if, I, if you ask me if I have a choice, I want to solve everything, man. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to solve all that, sometimes it may take quite a while and a bit difficult. But have you ever felt bored before? You have, right? And when you feel bored, I tell you, boredom is a very interesting thing. You must know boredom. Don't just try to end it without knowing it. You must know it. Because when you know it, then you find that boredom is more powerful than Sufu. Sufu can say 10 things to tell you to do one thing, but you may still not do it. But boredom, boredom will make you do things. We usually think that Interesting thing makes us do things. Yes, it does. But boredom is even more powerful. It will make you creative to think of things. <laughs> it will force you, it will make you uncomfortable to make you do things. Unfortunately, it doesn't always make you do the right thing. <laughs> Sometimes it make, even makes you do things that you will regret later. Fortunately, not all the time. Usually, it just makes you restless. Yeah. But what else? You all tell me. When you all feel bored, I already say the most obvious. This is one trick I teach you. By the time I was in secondary school, I learned, I discovered one thing. I'm, I'm quite a late bloomer in some ways. I learned ping pong, table tennis when I was at work. 20, over 25, 20, 20, 27 years old, then I learned how to play ping pong. Yeah. I learned how to properly rollerblade when I was quite, quite about 28, 27, 28 or so, 20, 26 years old. Very, very late. But there are things that I realized quite young also. So, um, this is one thing. A sidetrack, a sidetrack. You know me, I always sidetrack, a sidetrack. Yeah. You know, in class, teacher will ask students to do the exercise on the, the blackboard, right? 
So I realized something. The first few questions are easy. So I always volunteer. Teacher, I, I, I volunteer. That, that question I do. Then the teacher, oh, wow, very good. Then after I, okay. After that, I relaxed really whole, for the whole class, for the whole half an hour, one hour, just relax. <laughs> ah, you just go for the first question. Then it, no, no stress, then you can really learn. Otherwise, you are always like, Ah, hiding there, hiding there. Yeah. So I realized that actually this this mindset started when I was in secondary school. So when, even when I go to work, I bring along this mindset. I don't hide from the boss. I go and look for the boss. Boss, I finished already. Somehow, then boss, oh, this guy's so hardworking. Uh, yeah, must must not overwork him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But those who always keep hiding from boss, of course boss look for you, or you keep on hiding. <laughs> you know? Ah. So I give the first answer already. Restlessness. Ah, so now you all have to give a difficult answer. Your gift. What's the question? <laughs> ah, this is the second power that Sifu has. Talk, 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 talk. I think you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So you know, some students, they come and look for me. They, before that, they text me, and say, can I come and see you? I say, why? Oh, I have a lot of questions to ask you. I say, okay, okay. Yeah. Then we arrange a the time, they come down. Then when they come down, I say, so how how's things going? Then I say, okay, then I talk, 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 talk for two hours, three hours. <laughs> then they're, they're very happy. Okay, come, do the dedication. We say, go back. Then after a few minutes, Sifu, I forgot to ask you my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what is the question? How does boredom feel? How does boredom feel? How does it feel like? I mean, all of us have felt bored before. But how, how does it really feel like? Can you describe to me how, how it feels like for you? You just want something to change. So there's this urge. Yeah, we feel an urge coming up to want to change something. Mm. What else? How do you all do you all feel that way? Not all of you. Some of you. Okay. How do you feel? You learn nothing, I huh? learn nothing because it's already something I might have known or heard. So when it's boring to me is I don't learn anything from it. Ah. So sometimes we feel bored when uh, it's something that we feel that we know already. Yeah? And maybe we do know. Because I feel that human has a, a tendency is they want to improve themselves. Ah, so for you, you are you are you are uh, you are a something sing person, no? you are someone who actually aspire to be better. But that is also not very good because ah. you have other people who are male something sing, then you <laughs> then you don't feel like you don't feel quite like to talk to the person because the person male something sing. Ah, <laughs> hey, but it's true, no, isn't it? Because if you are a person who is a striver, someone who strives for excellence, who wants to improve yourself, sometimes, not all the time, and for some people, when you encounter someone who is not like this. Uh, so this is one other thing. So we have boredom, and then we have cases where when you encounter someone who is different from us, because it can be the other way, no? while you may feel that the person who is like have no interest for improvement that you find that it's not so interesting to interact with that person maybe and so you feel bored maybe that person also feel you bored <laughs> yeah ah uh, so so these are the conditions and when that happens how do you feel oh uh, when you encounter such a person, how do you feel? Who is different from me? Uh, uh, it, the way you describe, yeah. So you say that you you would feel bored, but how? What does that boredom do to you? What does? How does it make you feel? We need to communicate. 
if you need because to because sometimes oh. it might be different perspective that we are looking at mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so because as you say something can be boring to you but i mean you may find the person boring uh -huh. but the person may also find it boring yeah. Because we are thinking at a different level, different angle. Ah. And because people have different experiences. Uh, actually, I'm talking from the point of view of my own interaction with my husband. Oh, oh. Yeah. your husband so not here. He is not a... Hey, we are recording. Right? He's... <laughs> On YouTube. Uh, don't, don't, turn, don't, don't turn the camera. <laughs> Maybe we'll have we'll cut it off later. <laughs> Y'all please cut this part. Uh. Uh, take note, take note. Yeah. Yeah, but don't worry because he also knows. He knows uh, okay. <laughs> then then don't have to cut, don't have to cut. Yeah. yeah. No no uh, anything. Huh? Yeah. No no. But I I want to highlight I want to thank you for being so um, forthcoming and sharing. Um, and I want to highlight that. Uh, there are many things in life where we seem to have a choice. Like, you can choose what movie to watch. You can choose what clothes to wear. In a way, you can choose who to marry. But once you have chosen... <laughs> uh, I mean, there are people who unchoose it. Lah. Yeah, no, no, don't, I'm not giving you a suggestion. Lah. Don't, don't get funny ideas from here. Yeah. My point is, um, in life, there are, there, are, there are times where we have to live with the current situation. So, the question is, in cases where with minimal impact on ourselves and others, of course, nothing wrong with choosing, wanting to choose something that's more interesting. You must know, uh, Sufu is not here to say that you cannot choose a uh, it's about being able to live when you don't have a choice ah, and still be okay. Because we don't always have a choice. And this is again why I always tell small kids. It's okay to choose your food. But is it okay not to choose? To be able to choose not to choose. Ah, this is another level of choice. Ah, another level of choice. Because if you can do that, if you can choose not to be bored, even, ah, then you will never be bored again. Just imagine, if your life is never bored, yeah, just imagine. Imagine, like when Zhou Ping mentioned that when he f he's bored, he feels this urge to do something to change, to change something. Now we all di feel differently and later we, if you all have things to add, you can add. Yeah. This urge to change, to change something, to change what? The present moment. This is what we can call restlessness. Arahans, Arahans are the one who completely end restlessness. This is part of the five upper fetters. There's the five lower and the five upper. The five upper, number eight. Last time when I when I learned, you know, from the teachings, oh, wu xia fen jie, wu sang fen jie. Se ai, wu se ai. Then, diao ju, wu ming, uh, man, wu ming. Yeah. When I learned, I was like, diao ju, what does it mean? Oh, restless. And I was like, restless seems very trivial. Eh? You mean, why, why does it take until Arahan then you remove? Huh? First stage, Sotapana, huh? cannot, cannot not be restless. Ah. Second stage, Cannot la. Third stage like already with jhana. Cannot la. Oh, then later I realized. Mm. This restlessness is the inability to accept the present moment. 
when the present moment doesn't give us the stimulus we want, doesn't, you know, give us what the mind desires, uh, then the mind is restless. And it's very subtle. It's very subtle, very almost dormant. And not obvious to most people. Why? Because most of the time, before that restlessness is apparent to us, we are already doing something else. We are, we are pursuing something else. Pursuing something else. Or many times, we feel ourselves up so busy with stimulus, don't, we don't have a chance to be aware of it at all. So when we go for retreats, ah, that's why you look at most retreats, very boring. Uh, if you come for my retreats, you'll find that usually it's also quite boring. Uh, if you find that it's boring, that's okay. That's correct. If you don't find that it's boring, that's even better. That's also okay. Yeah. Yeah, because when you go for retreats, very little stimulus. Sometimes when I see that everybody is too almost gone really, then I talk, 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 talk. <laughs> yeah. To warm you up a bit, yeah. entertain you a bit, so that you don't feel so boring. <laughs> because for most people, you cannot stand it. You go crazy, you just pick, tick, pick, tick. Even if the leg is not painful, you start to imagine a pin. Just like how I imagine the <laughs> kettle of hot water. <laughs> so when you go for retreats, anytime you feel bored, ah, you must watch that boredom. Because this is the this is the result of the neither neutral, neither neither painful nor pleasant feeling resulting from that. Because if it's pleasant, it's pleasant. If it's painful, it's painful. That restlessness comes from this part. Because <laughs> So the mind is unsettled. Not satisfied with nothing happening. We crave for that stimulus. Light, light, bring it on. Bo Aya Sin. Sit down there. But don't wait until you go for retreats. On a day-to-day -day basis, at home, at work, yeah. There are there are moments of nothing happening. You're queuing for the for your food, nothing happening. But usually we have your colleague, then you make small talk. How oh, busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, usual, like, month end closing. Uh, Actually, have you ever thought, when, when people say, work, uh, what are they seeing about? You know, in my life, really, uh, I, I've never felt sien about work before, you know. No, no. <laughs> Some of you are like, Siao, it's gone. No, no. But can you imagine if you're... And I, I think some of you also, you know, see work that way. But for the rest who don't see it that way, where you really have some moment where you're like, oh, you're sien. You know? Like if you have a trust, ah, I don't want to work. But can you imagine if now... Sifu chant a few times, O Mani Pan Mei Hum or Ta Pei then snap a few times, then your life transforms such that you never feel that again. How amazing, you know. Yeah, I never had Monday blues, no. But today I'm not going to go in that direction again. It's about, um, instead of exploring my angle, I want to explore the other angle. What makes Monday blue? Do we involuntarily feel sien about Monday? Do we have a choice? If we don't have a choice, that means we are, uh, we are like handful and uh, involuntary. But why must it be this way? Is it our lot in life that we must be like this way? Don't have to, ma. But why? What about work makes it sien? Very tedious, doing the same thing, repeating Ah, tedious. Tedium. Yeah. When when you go through a lot of tedium, then you find it tedious repetition, yes. That's why we invent computers. 
because we don't like to do repetition thing. But you notice, all Buddhist practices are repetitive. repetitive. Yeah. The very word for cultivation, bhavana, is about repetition. <laughs> In the Chinese translation, siu si, siu is to, cult, is to practice, to change, yeah, to tune. Si, repetition. You see chanting, refuge in the Buddha, one time not enough, three times. <laughs> Homage to the Buddha, one time not enough, three times. And over here, we don't even, like just now we chant Ta Pei Zhou. Earlier we chant a bit of Om Mani Padme Ho. In most Buddhist center, repetition chanting is the norm. Even Theravada, Namo Tassa Bhagavato uh, and, and this is the modern new chanting that is more melodious. Otherwise, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samasa, or they chant Iti Piso Bhagava Araham Sama Sambuddho Vijat Vijacharana Sampano Sukato Logavito Anutaro Sum. Anutaro Something, something. <laughs> They repeat, you know, sometimes they have overnight chanting. Like, yeah, why? So funny, oh. Work boring enough, uh, repetition. With the, then come to temple, again, make you do even more. <laughs> yeah. But you think about it, your whole life, we have been doing the same thing, no? Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. We're not bored, like. Eh? Morning wake up and night sleep. Morning wake up and night sleep. Not boring, right? Every day eat. Every every ever ever yeah, yes. When it's the same food, we are sick of eating the same food. We're not sick of eating. Yeah. So what is really boring about work? But before we continue, hold that thought first, huh? KS have something to say. <laughs> he has been very polite, just holding there, <laughs> waiting for a moment. Right, come. Boring, uh, depend on how you define boring. Ah, yes. So boring to a sense, I also share pleasure. Ah, sorry? Pleasure. Pleasure. So you want something pleasure, as I feel that that's boring. Which one is boring? The pleasure or no boring? No You're pleasure. You're pursuing something. No pursuing pleasure. Uh huh. So you find that this thing you pursue. Meet what you want, repetitive, then okay, but you know, your target, you become boring. Ah. But for, 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 if let's say another perspective, mm. it's a duty. Mm. Duty always boring. <laughs> ah. But it's a duty you must perform to achieve the minimum target. Mm. That is a duty. Then it becomes like boring. Husband and wife. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. If you don't like it, you also have to do it. Have to do it. <laughs> Not say certain things. I mean, yeah. you have to earn something, bring back home that money, I mean, to yeah. sustain the, the, uh, the living. Yeah. That's a duty. Yeah. Uh, and you have to uh, set a harmony inside the family. That's mm. a duty. That's a duty of your father, or it's the duty of your, you as a wife, or a son, or whatever. That's Mm. So, in actual fact, it's a boring. In works, I don't find I like boring. Ah, sorry? In what? In my work, ah. I like boring. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Because why? If it's repetitive, I'm very relaxed. Ah. But my work is different. Not repetitive. <laughs> my work is always new. <laughs> <laughs> my work is very challenging. Wow. I mean, maybe some of you like it because like something new. Yeah. But there's a deadline put to it. Yes. This deadline you don't cannot achieve. You'll be dead. You better be repetitive, <laughs> achieve the same result. Yeah. If you change a slightly different result as what you plan, yes. The deadline call for it, you must answer. You yes. answer to customer. Yes. And this customer is going to give you yes or no this amount of let's say capacity. Yes. A sales. If you cannot meet it, then, then they don't give you the so, quantity. Yeah. So like for example, uh, Tuesday is Tuesday, even the uh, my team, not me, my team gonna answer certain things and I have make some 
<laughs> very good point. So it depends yes. what you pursue. Yes, that's a very what, good point. What is your, I mean, I differentiate between a duty and a ple pleasure. Beauty and versus ple pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure. pleasure always associated Duty with versus desire. Ah, the, 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 the things that you want, what you want. What you what want you versus want. what you have to do. So, uh, I, 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 I do not, I only learn until here. Ah, so very good. <laughs> some of you may recall some weeks back I wish I would uh, maybe some months back I would wish people have a quiet quiet Thursday then I sometimes I will stop then recently I wish everybody on the XPS chat have a normal Monday yeah can you remember so when when I wrote that, some students text me like, why normal? Why just normal? So I'm like, I told them, I said, we tend to you wish people have a great day ahead. Have a wonderful day ahead. How many times can it be wonderful? If every day is wonderful, then wonderful is just normal. Then you need extraordinary day to be happy. If you can have a normal day, it means nothing bad happened. No. Yeah. So this is like what KS said, to have a boring day at work. It's a, it's a blessing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing. Boring is not that bad. I shared with some students about this also, about our breath. Our breath and relationships Relationships are like our breathing. When it's working, you are not aware of it. You are aware of it only when it's not working. We tend to take the things that are working, that are boring, for granted. But the fact that it's boring, the fact that it's work, is because it's working. So I've been telling couples, if you feel that your relationship is boring <laughs> that there's no spark it means it's going fine don't don't drop it because it's boring <laughs> it means you all have succeeded yeah this was what you are working for think back those of you who are married or in a relationship think back the first few days you have excitement right but you know, do you know where this is, excitement come from ah, let the monk tell you <laughs> the reason why you feel excited is because you feel like that person may say yes may say no you are not sure whether the person will say yes whether the person will call you whether the person will text you you're not sure you're not sure whether the person will ask you out whether the person will agree to go out with you you're not sure that's why there's excitement when a person says, okay. A person just says, okay, wow, that's the best two letter. And some of them even just put K. <laughs> yeah, normally, if your friends or your colleague, yeah, you ask a long question, they say, K. They're like, what is this, man? Well, but if it's the guy or girl that you are hoping to go out with, the person just replies, K. <laughs> Take a screenshot, print it up, frame it up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Post on Instagram. Oh, yes. She said yes. Huh? Getting married? No, no, just go for a date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the excitement comes from this really. And that's why after dating for a while, when you're confirmed already, as you confirm not married, confirm like boyfriend, girlfriend already. Then there's a oh, why? Because it seems like of course you have to go out, ma. Uh, this is after some time. Uh, yeah? The initial part is also quite exciting. Because you you feel like, wow, how can it be? Like, wow, this girl actually wants to go out with you. Wow, he actually called me out. Wow. And then, not just call you out, but wow, you have so much fun together. Wow. Wow. 
what dharma man, don't go for SGC already. Huh? <laughs> wow. pra- my prayers are answered. Uh. I, I've, Sifu, I found happiness. <laughs> yeah. There's no suffering with it. <laughs> I have solved the equation. Yeah. Then, after going up for a few times, then expectations start to set in. The high becomes the normal. Initially, you don't even expect the person to say yes. But when the person says it, you are very happy. After a while, when you are going out regularly, you expect the person to have to say yes. Suddenly, when the person one day is not free, it's like, why are you not free? What are you doing? <laughs> you know? Ah. Then, your expectations become, why, why are we only going out once a week? Have to be twice a week. Have to be three times a week. That's why people get married. You want more. You want to have more of what? To have steady access to the other person. That's why we buy things. That's why we get married. <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. To have steady, to secure your access to that person. Contractually, I have to have access to you. Already sign the paper. Uh You don't let me have access to you, I can sue you. (laughs) For neglecting your duties as a husband or wife. (laughs) I don't know about Singapore, but in other countries, yes, no. Contractually, once you are married, you cannot just disappear and go off, no. That's the basis for people to say, I want to end a marriage because he, he just disappeared for three years. Yeah, or two years. <laughs> and so, once they get married, and then they, they start to, you know, go into the boring stage. Why is the boring stage? Hey, have you paid abuse? Uh? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because initially, don't know each other, ma. So, a lot of things to talk about, ma. Talk, 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 talk. Yeah. Go for well, next time you go out there, you know. <laughs> ah, now you don't know. Ah, next time, next time, then you know. Mm. Yeah, next time you no time to play game. Yeah. But that's also, in a way, not so bad. Lah, because I've counseled some couples. Husband, wife get married. Then the husband, more interested in playing game than spending time with the wife. You know? Come back home, wash up, then while, while eating, not texting. La. I mean, there are cases where they're actually texting somebody. But then, there are cases where playing games, eating, then the wife talking, mm-hmm, uh-huh, oh, uh-huh, mm, uh-huh, mm, uh-huh, oh, uh-huh, mm, uh-huh, mm, uh-huh. <laughs> I, can, I can write a, an app to do that, you know. <laughs> yes, okay, talk to the phone. <laughs> Then, you know what happened? After, after the meal, either busy, busy doing the work or playing games. Then the poor wife, I tell you, all the husband raise your hand. Are you happily married? Say yes. Uh, you don't have to tell me if not. Uh, but if you want to bump up your relationship, I tell you, don't need too much time. Don't have to buy too much flowers, diamond ring, whatever. Waste your time. That is needed when you didn't do the, the fundamentals. What is the fundamental? Every day come back. Like let's say if this is the wife. Uh, I cannot choose any of the ladies. Uh, later <laughs> you all get the wrong message. Uh. Let's say this is the wife. Okay, Then come back. Act more wife like. Uh. <laughs> yeah. First thing, you come back. Then Let's say your wife come back already. Then prepare dinner. Then, Ayah, wow, you prepared dinner for me. Uh. Hey, thank you. Uh. Uh, uh, then must ask. Do you all call your wife by some pet name? Have, ah? Uh? Guys, have or not? Don't have, go, go back and think. Uh, now start thinking, okay? Have or not? Don't have, start thinking. Uh, call baby, baby, uh, something. Uh, oh, then your wife see her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we tahan already. Yeah, initially I want to quarrel with you, then baby, baby, oh, what's <laughs> <laughs> ah, Then no more. 
Ah, I mean, now you, you, you may suddenly, hey, hey, wait, Sifu, you're asking us to be more attached to each other. You really chose to be attached, right? That's what you <laughs> You know what I mean? Don't do it half-heartedly. Do it willingly, voluntarily. You know, if you're going to get married, be married happily. Yeah? If you do that, then you say, hey, baby, uh, then this weekend, uh, I'm going for a three-day retreat. Ah, three-day retreat, uh, so long. Uh. Yeah. You must know. I learned from Vampire Chanko, that's why I become so loving. Ah, go, 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 go. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If after you learn Dharma, then after that, you know, you, you go home initially, you still baby be there. After you learn Dharma, wow, oh, cannot be attached. Then your, your, your wife, darling, how is your day? <laughs> don't, don't touch me. We, are, we must cultivate. I must do my, my puja. Oh, no. <laughs> Next time you want to go for SGC, where are you going? Sunday? SGC again, right? Cannot. Married life. I never get married before. <laughs> but I know how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, all thanks to so many people who come and teach me. Yeah. But the trouble is for most couples, I mean, we don't talk about those that go off. Uh, but even for normal couples, you must know that. Uh, actually, I haven't tell you the secret. Uh. Yeah, besides the baby, baby. Uh, or whatever you want to call, is just spending a few moments looking at your wife. If if it's girlfriend, how many of you are having girlfriends? I mean, husband, don't raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> 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 you have don't raise your hand also. Okay, you only have one, cannot have a girlfriend. Okay, unless it's the same girl. Okay, ah, so those with girlfriend, ah, one, the rest, no, but no girlfriend. <laughs> So, from girlfriend to wife, was it assigned by MOM, -O assigned by CMPB or something? <laughs> no, huh? not national service, no. Huh? You are not posted to this girl, no. You chose, no, Singapore 3.8 million Singaporeans plus foreign talents altogether, 5 over million, around equal distribution. So about two over a million of girls to choose, no? You take away 25% old, 25% young, left 50%, one point something million women, no? Then you take 40% Chinese if you are into, you know, race, like, it, like I mean, I don't know your preference, 40% of that one point something million is still 800 over 1,000, like. A lot to choose from, you know? Ah, you choose yourself, no? So if you get married to a person, it's like buying a car. Then you want to appreciate your car, wash your car, uh, ah, oh, ah, you know? Yeah, appreciate the car. So if you get married, appreciate your wife. How to appreciate your wife? Again, don't have to buy a diamond ring, this ring, that ring. Every day, just stare at her. <laughs> ah. When she's cooking, just stand there. And just, you know, stand there, then take the, take the carrot. <laughs> ah, gao liao, gao liao. Just down there, you know, when she's washing the dishes, don't you just finish and I okay, wash, I go and play game. <laughs> Who don't want? Someone just wash everything, then you just eat already, then just sit down there and play game. Who don't want? Then what for get married? <laughs> just hire a, a, a part-time maid, <laughs> you know, stay in service apartment, everything out for you. <laughs> don't get married. If you don't get married, spend time with that person. Otherwise, I mean, you think about it, huh? It doesn't make sense to put in so much effort to convince someone to marry you, no? <laughs> right? Well, after that, don't, you don't spend time with each other. Spend time. You spend time, then a lot of things settle. Yeah. And not just to avoid problems. You choose this person because you care for the person, ma. then you must really care for the person. How to care? Look at her. Ah, got girlfriend or not? I got time. SPS so busy. <laughs> huh? But it, next time if you have a girlfriend, I uh, hoping don't have to teach him. He know. He, uh, spend time. Look at the person you care for. You say you love that person. Then you must look at that person. Ma. I tell you, one of the things I learned over the years is 
that people don't get the attention. You know what you, you hear, you see on those internet, you watch movies, they, you know, there's this thing about, oh, I'm not getting attention. Actually, the attention is very simple, no? Just come back home, just, just spend, you don't have to spend seven and a half minutes, just look at your wife in the eyes. Even with your kids, just look at them in the eyes. When they are talking to you, when they show you the, the new toy, or just look at them and really appreciate them sharing their life with you. No? Yeah. But on the other hand, ah, I have tips for wife also. You know why your pato? It's because when you meet each other for dates, you don't nag at him. <laughs> if you start nagging at him on the first date, you will never go past the second date, you know. <laughs> ah, there are things that, you know, there, there are the things that is important. Yeah? But you also need to know that you're not running a company. <laughs> so don't always have to just solve problems. When you meet, have to say the come thing, come thing things also. Ah, a hey, wife, all the wife look up, right? Look up, look up. <laughs> ah, hey, your husband and wife, right? Hey, which one? Uh? Which one is the husband and wife? Uh? Uh, husband and wife. Ah, so when you, when he come back, or you come back together, whatever, ah, your, your must come thing, come thing, no. You know what is come thing, no? Ah, come thing, it means, ah, but you see, uh, the word relationship, oh, don't describe half the story. Chinese word, kam jing. <laughs> uh, you say in Hokkien, say, kam jing. <laughs> Must say properly. Uh, kam jing. <laughs> ah, almost there. Yeah. So, literally, literally it means the feeling, no? the feel. Uh. Ah, yang mau feel. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yeah, so you see, you see, usually guys are, you know there's a saying, guys are just small, small boys in big body. Yeah, and it's quite true, no? I don't know about other guys, but guys are, the mind are, if not for duty, uh, we, are, we are just thinking how to play, how to have fun. <laughs> you know, we just want everybody to have fun and, you know, take it easy, yeah, very good, just relax. You know, we, yeah. Our oh, mind is very simple, you know. <laughs> yeah. If not for the fact that we have to, I mean, not, not we are you <laughs> have to go and work. Our, our mind is just very simple. Just, okay, just, you know, ha happily doing things. Don't have to think. But then, luckily, there's women. Otherwise, nobody pay bills, you know. <laughs> nobody take care of the very mundane things. So, it's important that wife do that. But, don't do that the first thing your husband come back. If the first thing your husband come back, you start telling, hey, have you, do you buy the, the, the whatever thing or not? Do you uh, pay for the, ah, right, sometimes that happens. Uh. No, uh, never. <laughs> oh, uh, very good. <laughs> yeah, I counsel a lot of couples. Those that come to me usually have problem. Uh. Nothing, no problem. Wu si bu ten san bao dian. Wu si boring. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so when they come to me, many times it's this problem. Husband come back, then the wife, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, on the other hand, husband must know. When the wife, yeah, yeah, to you, either what, about children, la, the schoolwork, la, then the money problem, la, the house, la, the in-law, the neighbor. La, the, actually, you must know that the wife is trying to tell you how she feels throughout the day. Trying to share her day with you. Yeah. But not all the days is happy day, ma. Uh, not all days are happy day, ma. So you must build up resilience. Yeah. Before your wife can share, baby. <laughs> ah, then, then suddenly, that is the highlight of her day already. Then she forget about every other story to tell you. <laughs> so she only have happy story to tell you. But you must know that not every day is happy day. Some days are boring. Some days are boring. <laughs> yeah. If you can overcome boredom, then you, you won't be compelled to do things. When you're bored at work, 
you are compelled to quit. When they are bored at home, you are compelled to find entertainment. When you are com- bored in a marriage, <gasps> you are compelled to do what? Find another one. <laughs> yeah. You see how important boredom is? If you solve boredom, the whole economy collapse, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's important that we know boredom. Yeah. So go back every day, uh, go and look out for boredom. The funny thing is that when you look out for something, you cannot find it. Yeah, you cannot find it. Next week, when we come back, we look at Diamond Sutra and see how Bodhisattvas are not bored. Yen